So good morning all. So welcome you all to the second session of AICT Training and Learning, Atal Academy sponsored online one week faculty development program on cyber physical systems for smart environment and industrial IoT, organized by Department of ECE, Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. So this session is uh, on the interesting topic on industrial cyber physical systems handled by Dr. J. Anita Ma'am, a renowned associate professor, Department of CSE, Cornell University, Coimbatore. Dr. J. Anita Ma'am completed her B in Information Technology with first class distinction and university rank holder in 2004 from Manonmaniam uh, Sundaranar University, India. She completed ME in Computer Science with first class distinction in 2006 from the same. Uh, she started her teaching career in Nurul Islam College of Engineering from March 2006. Later joined in Karunya Institute of Technology in the year 2007. So currently she is working as an associate professor in CSE department, Karunya University. She completed her doctoral degree in computer science and engineering from Karunya University in the area of mammogram, medical image segmentation and classification. Her research interests are computer vision, image and video processing, medical image processing, machine learning and deep learning process. She has published her research papers in Elsevier, Springer and InterScience uh, journals with good impact factors. She is also working as a co-PA in DST sponsored funded projects worth 38.84 lakhs. So kindly welcome him to this session ma'am. Thank you. Thank you sir. My screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good morning, all. Um, I thank for the welcome uh, given by the sir. Um, and also, I thank um, the management, HOD of EC department and all the, the organizing members of this Atal FDP, FDP for giving me an opportunity to deliver a session on industrial cyber physical system. So this is the agenda of my today's presentation. So we start with the basic of the industrial revolution and move to industry 4.0 and uh, basics of CPS and how it is used in the industrial CPS and the digital twin technology and various challenges and attacks happened and the technologies uh, which comes under CPS and also finally we move to the industrial 5.0. And we all know about industrial revolution. So industrial revolution is nothing but a transition from a manual power to an artificial power. And we all studied history uh, with civilization. So when it, with the centuries of 14th and 15th centuries, uh, the humans are uh, organized to um, do civilizations. Uh, so they all do with uh, farming. So they settle near the uh, river areas and they start to do uh, farming. Um, so that time they have to do all the things manually. So even though they have to dig the earth, plant the trees and watering, bringing the water from one place to every, so that all will be in manual process. So later, the industrial revolution comes in the year of, in the century of 15th and 16th. So there is an invention of the artificial powers, that is a fuel, steam, petrol, electric. So that leads to create some uh, machineries. So that machineries give a, a, a comfort to the human because they help to uh, work along with the human to do this forming thing. So that makes uh, the comfort level of the human increase and their effort got decreased and the productivity time got reduced and the productivity got increased. And also we can see nowadays in that machinery itself, if we add our artificial intelligent power, that machine will be acting as a smart machine. So in our daily day life, in all the place, everywhere we are seeing machines. So even though in our home, uh, so we are going to the kitchen, every job you do, we have the machinery, so which will make our human life very comfortable. So we have it in industries, the machines will be available in industry, uh, in road, everywhere. So everywhere we have it. 
and now i will go with some of the revolution happened so agriculture revolution so you all know uh, in previous years we want to carry water from one place to another place the person has to manually carry the water through the bucket or they use the bullets to take a water from the well uh, so they have to do all the things manually so when the industrial revolution comes so the electrical pumps are introduced so the electrical pumps are driven by the electrical energy so they can take a water without the human effort and now when we add artificial intelligence to the electrical pump it becomes an artificial pump so that pump can think and decide it itself think and decide when to start and how much water to pump and what level of water to be monitored so everything will be done automatically and same thing um, to do farming also modern farming instruments have been introduced so that also increase the comfort level of the uh, human to do the agriculture but nowadays we have a technologies iot drone ai so that makes to do with now with the smart agriculture and that is also one of the industrial revolution and when come with the revolution in transportation uh, 50 some 500 years back and all you want to carry something from one place to another place or you want to go from one place to another place you need to walk for a long uh, distance and it will take a long time but when the industrial revolution comes with the fuel steam uh, diesel petrol everything introduced so we have uh, vehicles so that using an automobile so it can easily reach from one place to another place and also nowadays we are adding an artificial intelligence to this vehicles so we are thinking of with the uh, smart cars that is a driverless cars and the revolution not only happen in agriculture and transportation so mainly this happen in the industries also and that will mainly affected in the manufacturing industry with the textile industry so now we will go with some how the industrial revolution happen in different um, stages and first you know that uh, uh, previous years whenever 30 times when the human wants to develop some products so they used to develop uh, by uh, manually by using some basic tools in a small workshops and when the industrial revolution comes this manual production leads to mechanical production so initially the industrial revolution happened in the 18th century so where the machineries got produced to produce the products and the introduction of this water steam fossil energy sir come uh, the in, uh, the industrial revolution initially happened in the year 1760 in england so that leads to dramatic reduction in the material cost and the production time and in the year 1871 to 1914 we have this uh, industrial 2.0 evolution so that will due to the electrical energy introduction of this electricity so we have a mass production line and this will increase our economic growth and also it will increase the productivity the first assembly line was patented by ransom e old so he is the pioneer of the american automotive industry and later we have the digital evolution revolution so in the year of 1970 we moved to the industry 3.0 we have an introduction of transistors ic computers microprocessors and that will make you to move in an industrial revolution with an automation and now we are in talking about industry 4.0 so here the industry 4.0 makes a smart factory so here the autonomous decision making will be done with the cyber physical system which uses the various technologies that is a machine learning big data analytics iot and cloud technology sensors all the things drone and all so because these technologies can interconnected communicate analyze and act so that will leads to a smart manufacturing and because the future Uh, we think everything need to be cognizant and because every aspect of the human task will be done by the machine so that should be with intelligence and in an automatic way uh, that make our human life very easy and these are some of the key facilitators facilitator of the industry 4.0 so an important aspect thinking about industry 4.0 is the automation uh, the entire production line need to be automated and to do that we have sensors actuators and then communication technologies and automation technologies are available so these are some of the enabling technologies and one of the key facilitator in the industry 4.0 is the cps so cps is nothing but a interlink between the cyber system and the physical system 
And this industry 4.0 uh, applies the IOTs and sensor to capture uh, the data um, in a system and also from an environment. And these data are generally big data. And these big data are collected and stored in the cloud. And these can be analyzed with various machine learning or artificial intelligence algorithms. And based on that, it will efficiently increase the autonomy and the cybersecurity levels. And we have something that called as additive manufacturing, which is nothing but the digitization of manufacturing. So we all uh, know about 3D printing. So that also one of the key facilitator in the industry 4.0. And the cyber physical system, the cyber physical system enabling uh, the human to be smart and comfort environment. And it not only applicable with our normal use with our smartphone, uh, smart watch, not only stop there. So it will work in every area. So we have smart city and we have CPS in the healthcare environment, in traffic control system and in our drones avionics so everywhere the cps is there and we just go with what is in cps the term cps is initially coined by ellen gill in the year of 2006 before that also we have used cps but the term is initially coming in the year 2006 and cps is an integration of computation networking and physical process according to the definition of the berkeley lab and it is an interaction between a cyber world and the physical world. The idea behind the CPS is the embedded system. So we can conceptually tell uh, CPS is a combination of embedded system integrated inside a physical system. So before going with detail with CPS, we just see what is an embedded system. So embedded system is nothing but a software working in a hardware to make your system to be very smarter. And this embedded system having some capabilities such as communicate, communicate, uh, sorry compute communicate and control and this systems will communicate through the environment using the sensors and actuators and all of our uh, devices around the world in terms of vehicle aircraft radar instruments everywhere we have this embedded system integrated inside our physical system and the another definition for um, cyber physical system from the nist lab lab and it is a smart system which interacting networks of physical and the computational components. So if you take with the physical component, physical components, you can touch it. It can be a sensor, it can be a mobile phone or it can be a machine. But we take with computational components that you cannot touch it. And that can be either a program or your AI algorithms. And the changes what happen in your physical system will affect in your computational system. The changes you make in the computational system will affect in the physical system. And the computational system generally includes, if you see here, the computational system generally includes storage, processing, and communication. And these uh, CPS systems uh, will provide you with smart service, and that will improve the quality of the life. So when you see this diagram here, uh, so it is a framework of the CPS. And this dotted line represents the CPS. It is a link between your cyberspace and the physical space. So in the physical space, we have several physical machines, uh, that is our systems. And that systems will sense the information from the surrounding, and that will be communicated. That information, what it observes, will be communicated to the cyberspace. In the cyberspace, uh, we have the computation. So based on the data come from the physical space, it will do some computation and make some decisions. And that decisions are acting as a control and that actions will be again reflected back to the physical state. So to change the state of the physical object. So it should be a closed loop. So the changes uh, from physical affect the cyber, the changes in the cyber affect the physical. And we all know that uh, even though in a car, uh, you have an embedded system which support the anti-lock braking system. It's an embedded system. So it can communicate to the environment through actuators and these sensors. And this embedded system cannot work alone. So multiple embedded systems are available in your physical system car. So these, the data is collected from various embedded systems will be connected to the cloud through the internet. So it will create a system of systems. And the data collected will be stored in a central unit. And based on that, you may do some interactions 
either a system to system interaction or you can do a system to human interaction and so next you may have a question so we have all the physical devices so why we need to integrate the computation inside our physical device so because the physical device some functionalities the physical devices or the pure mechanical devices cannot able to do it so we need to integrate the cps properties uh, inside our physical system so that uh, the impossible thing by the physical uh, machine can be done by the use of now the cps so i can tell some examples so here it is a fighter plane so the pilot cannot uh, control the plane with his own because it having some computer on board control so based on that only the pilot will control the plane and this is something called as the europe hybrid car so here also the energy management will be done in on board so how much energy will be applicable to the battery engine so all will be controlled in a computer on board so you all know about vacuum cleaner uh, so the vacuum cleaner uh, the user has to manually only uh, use this vacuum cleaner to clean the floor but uh, this device is called as Roomba. So it is an intelligent automatic floor cleaner. So without the human inter intervention, so this floor cleaner automatically move around the floor and clean the floor. So the physical device, you are adding a computation. So that may, becomes automatic and intelligent. And this is the working principle of CPS. So we have two spaces. First one is our physical space and next one is our cyber space. So if we consider in the physical space, we have some real objects, we have communication devices and the household devices. And in our cyberspace, we have cloud and we have servers. So the uh, systems available in our physical space sends the data from the environment and through the communication device, it will send that information to the cyberspace. So in the cyberspace, the data will be processed and that information will be through the actuator devices it will be given an instruction to the physical devices so for example um, we can see that we have a physical device as ac so ac we have a temperature sensor so use that temperature sensor it will sense the temperature around the uh, environment so that information through the sensing device it will sense it and through the communication device it will send to the cyberspace so in the cyberspace, it will do the computation and based on that computation, some control information will be given back through the actuator and it will reflect in the physical uh, state that is the AC machine. So it can either adjust the uh, temperature based on the temperature around the surrounding. So that will lead to your smart home. Okay, And this embedded computers and networks generally monitor and control your physical devices in a feedback loop. So the changes happen in the physical process affect the computation and the vice versa. And there are some of the application areas you can use CPS. So one of the first applications is the healthcare environment. So the CPS is integrated in medical devices and the system. So you all know with oximeter and the blood sugar level meter and all. So these are all used to measure the psychological parameter of the patients with high accuracy. And there is a success in the image guided and robotic surgery with the CPS concept and also so we can control the fluid flow so how much uh, so based on the analysis you can control the fluid uh, for example how much injection need to be given to the patient suppose one patient is available in the icu so by using this uh, cps technology you can observe the flow of uh, fluid flow that is the glucose level they can measure and based on that they can adjust the insulin level and also it will be applicable in the bone marrow uh, treatment and also in the blood transplantation treatments and there are some cps systems which is work based on the cognition and the neuroscience so you all know about brain computer interface which is work with the interface between the brain and the computer to provide the uh, assistance to the paralytic people and we have therapeutic robots which is mainly used in the autism centers rehabilitation centers and cancer centers and entertainment robotics. So here you can see one picture. It is a robotic uh, entertainment robot called a Steve. So which is available in Washington for the retirement community people to entertain them. And then orthotics. And orthotics means you know that um, so there are range of aids will be available. So the aid equipments will be available so they can use to correct the problems. And prosthetics means entirely it will be replaced with artificial things. 
and the blind people they cannot see around the environment so using the cps technology the environment image itself converted to sound and give some information to the blind people and the next uh, another one application is the uh, in the digital uh, health so it is a combination of doctors from us and uh, india so they are uh, using this health program that is the whole body digital twin technology which is used to uh, do a type 2 diabetic reversal program and it is also based on cps with the digital twin technology and here from the body around 300 plus health signals will be collected through the non invasive sensors and that information will be transferred to the digital twin so the digital twin will analyze these signals and it will provide the information that which are the damaged metabolisms need to be healed in order to reverse the diabetic diabetic thing and some of the application in transportation so all the vehicles and avionic control everything having this embedded systems with sensors and also we have this vehicle we have the proximity detection that is the distance between one vehicle to another vehicle to avoid uh, uh, accidents so we can measure that proximity detection and by using this transport cps sensors this information will be go to the smart controller and the smart controller can able to do some real time monitoring uh, and they can control the traffic control signals and also they can provide the coordination between the vehicles so in a heavy traffic uh, they can provide the transit signal priority or if the ambulance is coming so they can provide the queue warning so that all can be done with the transport cps and when you go with the smart grid so we have these smart meters the smart meters are mainly used for demand management and the automatic distribution uh, so you may think that you are in a campus so the campus having quarters okay so in the morning time the people are working in the office so uh, the quarters that is the energy usage is very small but evening time the energy usage is high and also in the weekends also the energy usage is high so using the smart meter it can obtain the information the end user load and it measures how much energy consumptions are needed for the consumer and it will collect the data aggregation unit will evaluate the regional power consumption and that information will be go to the central controller and based on that um, load and the consumptions the power plant will distribute the energy to the different regions and that is also based on cps and the cps also used in industries mainly in the manufacturing and the logistic part based on the sensors actuators and communication capabilities that mainly used to do with smart control and smart monitoring optimal resource utilization so not only in the manufacturing also in the oil plant gas water plant power grid turbine uh, retail industry okay so all the where we can use this cps in the industrial cps and here in the manufacturing plant it will monitor the production flow it will automate the inspection and it will also check the condition and the maintenance of the machine and rfid sensor to identify the product and remotely okay so the remote cps can uh, without with the human uh, um, control they can control the devices which is remotely available so that also you can do it with cps and also in the production line automate material handling so everything will be done so this end product customization will be done in mainly in the uh, bank and the retail industries so they have to create a customized product to the customers needs based on their needs and when go with the industrial cps so industrial cps is mainly used for assess manage assess management and then workplace safety quality control product monitoring supply chain okay so in all levels so from the design until the production so every functionality of your production line will be affected with the cps and here uh, the traditional uh, manufacturing industry is using the top down approach for decision making so they will think of how many machines are available how much assignment production is available so they won't consider the condition of the machine so they will check the machine is available and also how much production they need to do only that decision making they are doing it's a top down approach so that may leads to some inconsistency so sometimes there may be some overstock and sometimes there may be some unexpected machine uh, downtime 
so now if you introduce the cps so we are making a communication connectivity between machines so the analytics will be done in the top so uh, we are taking we are collecting the data from the machine in the lower down lower level and that will be sent to the higher level for decision making so based on the decisions and uh, your um, the analytics will be done on the top so that you can easily manage it. So it is from the down to top. So the down, the data will be collected and the decisions will be made at the top. So by using this CPS in the manufacturing environment, so we can provide uh, 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 machine health prognosis and access management and the supply chain product monitoring. So everything will be done in an automatic and in an intelligent way. And this is the 5C architecture, which is generally used in the industry CPS. And here it represents the pyramid. The pyramid itself represents the lower part having large amount of data, the higher part having only more valuable data. So it have five levels, connection level, conversion level, cyber level, cognizant level, and configuration level. So in the connection level, generally the data from the machines and the environments are collected. And in the conversation level, the data will be converted into an information and in the cyber level, so here the cyber level, what happens? So the systems, so multiple systems are connected as a network and the data from the information from different uh, systems are coming in the, in the cyber level. And in the cognizant level, so it has to give some visualization uh, based on the analysis. It will give some visualization to the user to make some decisions. And in the configuration levels, based on the decision making, the machine will do a self-configuration or a self-adjustment or a self-optimization. So based on the supervisory control, the decision happened in the cognition level, along with the human supervisory, the machine can uh, now track and detect their failures and they can uh, do a self-adaptation. And this 5C architecture somewhat uh, changed. In the traditional view, I told more importance is uh, given for the data. So it is a data view. So the data is generally flow from bottom to top and all your decision making will be happen in uh, top and the decisions will be moving from top to bottom. So in this changed view, the intelligence itself added in the lower level itself. So here you see in the connection level, so using the sensors, uh, the machine conditions like temperatures, pressure and speed that Informations will be collected along with the environment information and in the conversation that information will be converted the data will be converted to information so which is mainly used for the health management of the device so the device have a self awareness and then in the cyber level we have the network of machines so it is like a central hub so the data coming from multiple machines will be integrated in the cyber level so we can able to make a self comparison because uh, we can use some comparative analysis that how the other machines also uh, use uh, based on the feedbacks coming from the other another machine so they can know it's self comparative and then cognizant level uh, the information the analytic information will be given to the user for decision making in terms of the individual system in terms of the comparative analysis so it will act as a decision support system and in the final level based on the supervisory control the required actions will be written back so the feedback will be given from the cyberspace to the physical space so the machine can try to adjust itself in order to avoid some uh, health maintenance issues for the machines and uh, this uh, video tells you how the cyber physical production system happened in Siemens. A self-organizing factory that entirely configures and organizes itself and responds to changing requirements and where humans and machines seamlessly collaborate. This vision is becoming reality in the Siemens Living Lab for cyber physical production systems. Alexa, figure product logo echo. The manufacturing of a product starts in virtual reality with the help of simulation technology. The cyber physical production system first checks whether the production is feasible. The machines in the factory provide detailed information about their production skills and constraints. Based on this information, the system generates a digital twin of the product and compares the required production steps with the production skills of all machines and humans in the factory. 
the machine gets the knowledge of how the product shall be made directly from the digital twin. Based on the information about how the parts are to be assembled, the system dynamically calculates all necessary steps and carries out the production autonomously. This means that the product steers its own production. This is an important feature of Industry 4.0 solution. Siemens enhances the skills of the machines through machine learning, intelligent sensors, and speech recognition. This optimizes the production process and increases the quality of the product. Safety requirements are also developed to ensure that people and machines can work together safely. In the future, cyber physical production systems will better meet customer needs and manufacture products in a faster, more individualized, and more efficient manner. Siemens, ingenuity for life. So you have seen this, how the cyber production system using the digital twin technology. So mainly the digital twin technology is used in smart manufacturing. You all know that the CPS is the integration of computational and the physical process. And here it is a one to many correspondence because if I do some changes in the computation system, it may affect uh, more than one physical system because a system is a component of multiple physical components. So if I do one computation, it may affect the multiple components, multiple physical components. So it provide a one to many correspondence. But here in your digital twin technology, we have an exact digital copy of the physical device. And here the mapping is a one to one. So whatever changes you do, whatever computations you do in your physical, it will affect that particular digital or whatever you make that uh, changes in the digital system that will affect the physical system because uh, in the digital environment we have the model so that operations will be automated or optimized uh, based on the uh, feedback coming from your physical process so this diagram tells you how uh, we have a different manufacturing environment so this is in the traditional way and then we have with iot and all the things and then in the 2006 we have the cps it is an integration of cyber system and the physical system the physical system do the sensing the cyber system use the controlling and this is the digital twin technology your physical will be have an exact copy of the virtual environment and here the data will be sent from the physical system to the model so that model will send the feedback so based on that the adjustment will be done in the physical system so that will lead to a smart manufacturing environment. And this is generally the functional implementation of the industrial CPS. In the physical environment, we have all the physical resources related for the manufacturing. In the cyber space, we have all the apps and services which is related for data management, data analysis, and decision making. So sensors and the actuators are the important component of the CPS. Uh, the data, whatever you capture from the physical device, that will be sent to the cyber world that is acting as an information and the cyber world will do the computation and that control signals, the decision making, the controls will be come back to your physical space to make some changes in your physical devices. And the functional implementation of the DTD, that is the digital twin technology. Uh, so in call message so i will enlarge okay thank you so here the model will interpret the behavior so here uh, it is a digital twin technology so your entire physical entity will be simulated the behavior of your entire physical entity will be simulated using the modeling and the simulation analysis in order to predict and control your future states based on the feedback achieved so here the data are collected in the material model. It is using the modeling and simulation and based on the behavior, it will send back to the physical entity. And in this model, so here the two things in our uh, CPS, the important things are sensors and actuators. And in digital twin technology, the important two things are model and the data. So the model will interpret the behavior to predict the future state and based on the data uh, gathered during the real time or a historical data or through experience and the knowledge. And here the model can be either a geometrical model, structural model, material model and the rule model. So based on that, uh, we will process the model and evaluate the model and the decisions will be sent back again to our physical world.
And this is the CPS workflow. The CPS workflow mainly consists of four things, networking, monitoring, computing, and actuating. So you all know that uh, because it is uh, compute, then, sorry, it is first collect, and then compute, and then again control. So we have here monitor, the sensor will collect the data and actions, and that will be sent to you uh, from the physical space to the cyberspace. So networking, the data from the physical space will be aggregated, and it will be sent to the digital space for further processing. Computing in our cyberspace, the data information, whatever capture, it will be analyzed. So in order to satisfy some criterions in your physical state. And finally, actuating, that is the control based on the uh, feedback, the control commands will be go back and reflected in the physical process. So here, this Y represents data acquisition, Z represents aggregate the data and pass to the cyberspace, and U represents based on the computation, the feedback result, and V represents the control commands that will be passed to the physical space. And these are the some of the characteristics of the CPS. First one is reactive. So the reactive represents that will be a continuous interaction between the environment uh, and your system. So based on the data you uh, collected, the actions are determined and also it will be sent back immediately to the physical state. So it is like a closed loop. So whatever uh, your data gathered from the physical space, it will be going to the cyberspace, compute it, and based on that, the control signal will be immediately react with the corresponding physical device. And next is hybrid. It is a combination of both physical and the digital space. And then dedicated. So for each application, we have a particular dedicated UI. So it will know the behavior and the knowledge of the system in order to minimize the resource and also to maximize the robustness. And dynamic. Uh, your CPS has to uh, uh, adaptable to the dynamic environment. That is because the environment have a frequency changes. Uh, that may be some high volume of data will come or that may be some fluctuations happens in your environment. So your CPS should have a dynamic nature. And this is the CPS reference model. So what we see previously, the 5C model, it is based on data centric. And this CPS model is based on mainly network centric. So here the CPS architecture having three layers. The first layer is a device level. Next is the cloud or enterprise level. And the third is the control or enterprise level. And the third is the cloud level. So in the device level, we have all of our smart devices. It can be a small consumer electronics to a large production machine, so which uses the ICT technology. And these devices are able to collect the information, process, or communicate the information, all the things from its own and uh, from the environment. And these machines can interact with the other machines or with the environment or with humans. And some of these smart devices having limited resources in terms of energy and the memory. And in a network topology, these smart devices are placed in the edge networks. And control or enterprise level, and the devices available in the edge network are communicate to the internet. Okay, so the smart devices are arranged in the edge network, and these edge networks are connected to the internet through the gateway. And uh, in the internet, we have some server-grade backend systems, so that will do the computation. So from different uh, edge users, uh, the data from different edge users are collected and aggregated, and that will be computed in the uh, server grade backend system in the internet because internet is the backbone uh, to do with the uh, computation and now uh, you can connect the enterprise level of uh, one enterprise with the another level uh, sorry so you can do with business to business communication uh, so the enterprise level of uh, one company can be connected with the enterprise level of another company in order to do the business to business communication and the last one is the cloud level. So cloud level is mainly used for storage and processing. And because it is a top layer architecture, it will provide the cl uh, cloud infrastructure uh, that will be provided with different cloud providers. And that also support with the shared computing. The cloud environment will be shared with different end users. And here the human having two roles. One is a subject. The human can be a subject or the human can be a recipient. For example, 
you are going for a health checkup. Uh, so subject is a person uh, from whom the data is collected. Recipient is a person who is collecting the data. And that will be a two level of flow. One is the inter-level flow and another one is intra-level. Inter-level means the data will be flow from the up to the uh, flow from down to up. It is in the upstream and the commands or the control will be flowing from top to bottom. And intra-level means uh, the data and the control both will flow in the same level. And this is the CPS evolution. So in the past, we have the RFID. So the network we used is the wired stationary and the data collected in terms of uh, identifiers of the RFID. And the present state, we are having the WSNs and also embedded platform cloud technology. And using the sensory data, we are collecting the data. The future, that is the industry 4.0. We are moving with ICT devices with new technology, which will provide the end-to-end uh, network and also machine to machine network and which uses the concept of big data. Uh, so that makes your system to be very smarter and self-aware and also it will be useful in the suitable mass production line. And these are some of the design challenges happen in CPS. The first one is the design abstraction uh, because the physical part you want to do something but it is very hard to predict uh, the cyber part will meet all the requirements of your physical part because we are creating some abstraction. The abstraction will not include all the characteristics of the environment. Uh, maybe your timing, uh, the fluctuations, so that all you cannot keep it in the abstraction. And safety, because here all the devices are interconnected and interdependent, so safety is very, very important. So we don't trust communication channel because the intruders will inject some messages through the communications channel to divert and users. Uh, the user of the system itself, uh, sometimes uh, not safety because some of the uh, aircraft crashes will happen uh, due to the pilot itself. And the safety can be verified with formal verification and the certification and integration because if you work as a single system, it is very easy. Now we are implementing all the things together, integrating, so it is somewhat challenge and timing predictability. So we have to ensure all the computation will be finished in a guaranteed time uh, in terms of correct result and in terms of the correct result in the correct time. And composability, it is an interrelationship between all the components uh, because we are using multiple components are interconnected. So they may use different hardware and the software resources. So that is a main issue. And software models, again, we have different subsystem working with different software models. Uh, so now it is an interdisciplinary. So we want to connect everything. So that issue also we need to handle it. And security and privacy threats in the device level. We have some security and privacy in terms of eavesdropping, spoofing and duplication of tags. And in the enterprise level, uh, the data are collected from sensors and the actuators and they are sent through the gateway to the internet. So the accessing of sensor, so that may be some uh, security threat might happen in the accessing of sensors and the data, whatever we are sending, that should be a sensitive data, it should be protected. And in the cloud level, the cloud level also, we have to enforce the safety because the data protection and the information leakage, that all to be taken care. Uh, so the global surveillance disclosure survey tells that the unauthorized third party access to the cloud uh, is a very, very important thread. So the data accessing in a cloud sharing environment cloud, so that also we need to take care. So these are the, some of the security and privacy threats in the different layers. And there are some security and privacy attack points happen in CPS. So here uh, there is a communication between CPS to the internet. So it using some communication protocol. So if there is any vulnerability in the protocol, uh, easily using that interface, the intruders can affect this communication. And then in terms of the APIs, so if there is some security flaw in the APIs means that easily can be cracked. And there is a connection between, because all of your devices will be either connected to another device or through the infrastructure or to a client. So here, uh, the intruders will identify the relationship, the trust relationship, and they try to break it. Uh, 
they will send some fake environment input they will uh, send some uh, spoof, uh, spoofing of user interaction so these points uh, these are the some of the security attack points so these points to be taken care of and uh, important security protection should be made in these uh, attack points and there are some of the attacks available in cps that can be a passive attack or that can be a active attack the passive attack comes under is dropping compromise key attack man in the middle attack denial of service attack so you all know that with is dropping so the intruders will monitor the communication channel uh, they will send some uh, unwanted messages without affecting the behavior of the system and compromise key they try to get the key and by getting one of the key they try to explore the additional key and to decrypt the messages and man in the middle attack uh, so the attacker will send some cheating messages so that may mislead the operator to take the actions and denial of service attack so the attacker will send some uh, unwanted packet to overload the network so we the physical process system cannot able to respond it and there are some active attacks the active attacks are done by the skilled hackers they are having a advanced programming skill uh, to find the vulnerability in a system and this skilled attackers may be the employee of that system or uh, the client of the system because they have a level of authority they know how to damage the system uh, how to steal the data because they have some previous knowledge about the system so they can easily crack it and these type of attackers are called as Uh, individual attackers and there are some attackers called as group attackers so they are a criminal group they have some motivation behind to do this attack uh, they mainly try to damage the economic health and finance system of the particular system and to do this they will hire the professional programmers uh, to tamper the networks and that should be some defensive mechanism to be handled so first one is the crypto system so we need to use some secure cryptography algorithms to encrypt the message before sending an intrusion detection system it will monitor the network for malicious malicious activities and then firewalls it is a network security device which will monitor the incoming and the outgoing outgoing traffic of the network virtual private network you would provide a uh, secure tunnel and hide the ip address that is a private network in the public network and software updates we need to do a uh, regular software updates in our cps system and these are some of the principles which behind the cyber security and the physical security so the principles are confidentiality integrity availability authentication and non reputation that all related with the cyber security for physical security we have deterrence uh, prevention detection delay response and neutralization and some of the principles of cyber security is related with the some of the principles of the physical security so if you see here three types of arrows are there the first arrow the straight arrow the straight line represents it is a two way relationship uh, the confidentiality is mainly related with deterrence delay and the neutralization and this curved arrow represents the one way relationship so this principles the detection and response principle is one of the component for the confidentiality so like that we have in terms of integrity it is a direct connection with detection and here this availability it is a inverse connection the dotted line represents the inverse relationship so availability is inverse relationship with delay and here the non reputation uh, principle is related with deterrence and detection authentication is related with deterrence detection delay and neutralization except response so it will give uh, how Uh, the different principles of cyber security related with the physical security and there are some approaches to secure the cps and these are the some of the security mechanism that need to be implemented uh, to handle the security principle in terms of your physical space and the digital space and here this plus plus represents this security implementation mechanism is very much Uh, connected with this security principle so barrier is having a high responsible to the deterrence and log having a high responsibility to the non reputation encryption have a high responsibility to the confidentiality the plus plus symbol and the plus represents 
this implementation mechanism enable the principle so barrier enable confidentiality integrity delay and neutralization the minus represents it is a harm so here the, if you implement the barrier mechanism it is a harm to the availability so no one can able to access it so if i implement the barrier mechanism it is a negative effect to the availability principle so that will be uh, with security mechanism that will be available to which security principle and there are some of the approaches available to secure our cps uh, the first one is least privilege least privilege means you provide access to only the resources need to fulfill the user role for example we have a smartphone the smartphone having a word processing application so some occasional time it needs to use a camera to take a picture and integrate into your word processing system so least privilege and need to know need to know mean we'll restrict the authorization limits for the un uh, for the authenticated user for example already we have given an access to the camera uh, to work with the word processing but while we typing we don't need to use the camera so we don't need to provide access to the camera because we are typing so that during the typing we need uh, even though the access is given to the camera but that situation we don't need to use it so that is need to know and segmentation the segmentation is uh, we are uh, providing a barrier uh, between the group of devices based on the communication functionality and we use some subnetting encryption and local area networks and access controls to a specific persons and there are two types of segmentation one is temporal segmentation and another one is role based temporal means the accessibility given only for some time and role based means uh, based on the authentication for some set of people only the authentication is given to uh, some functionality and defensive dimensionality so there are two things one is defense in depth and another one is defense in breadth so defense in depth means uh, so we have a sequence of keys okay so one of the key the intruder break it so automatically the other keys has to uh, uh, um, take in more security because they already crack one key so they try to hack the other keys so the strong will be given to the other keys and here it is like a single castle so we have a single message that will be um, uh, secured with multiple keys and defense in breadth so defense in breadth is uh, multiple castles are there we need to multiply collaborate and we need to um, save that multiple cast multiple castle so here it is a collaborative security environment so all the components work together in order to um, provide a security and user configurable data collection and login because data collection is uh, very much useful so because it is used to know the dynamics of the group and the characteristics of the group so when you do the data collection the privacy is very very important so the user has to ensure that which data is collected and which data is shared to whom what data is shared so all the information need to be known to the user and pattern application so it represents the data will be resummed because sometimes in the um, same communication pattern will be gone in the network so automatically the malicious user will try to mimic the data so uh, they won't um, they try to affect the conversation between the two machines so what we can do is the data can be resampled and stored in the repository. So for example, the medical data and sensitive data, we need to provide some privacy preserving frameworks. So the data will be not stored directly, it will be encrypted or it will be resampled and stored in the database. And end-to-end -end security, so by using authentication, integrity, encryption, we can provide the end-to-end -end security. And tamper deduction, so the tamper deduction can be uh, secure by using some tamper resistant locks you can put some authorization codes security cameras alarms so by using that you can secure the tamper deductions and there are some of the challenges in the cps security because uh, uh, as day by day uh, the usage of cps is increasing so there are many challenges that are associated with the cps uh, one of the thing is the cost of the cps software uh, the development of aircraft itself, 30 to 40 cost will be sp spent for the uh, software development of the aircraft. So the cost that is also related with that. 
and then interoperability because multiple uh, components are integrated together and that can need to be connected with the environment and they need to connect it with the surrounding system so interoperability is one of the challenge and then whatever technology are integrating it should be uh, smooth and simplified and the safety and reliability is one of the other things and security because uh, um, if you affect any one component of the cps so that will have a direct impact on the economy and the whole society and privacy all the personal data whatever we are collecting all should have sensitive information so the privacy need to be guaranteed so these are some of the challenges in the cps security so i'll just go with uh, how the cps will be applicable in the autonomous vehicle and here we have the uber car google car so they all using this cps uh, technology in order to sorry so in order to use with um, cameras sensors so they will uh, collect the data in the environment and take action based on that in order to uh, work in an intelligent and the autonomous way and here this can be this autonomous can be achieved in different five levels in the level 1 the autonomous will be happened in the anti lock braking system and in level 2 uh, we are having this abas that is the advanced driver assistance system so it will help the uh, driver to remove the hand from the steering for some time and in level 3 the driver can completely turn the attention away for some period of time and in level 4 uh, they can put the uh, because in you know that uh, in highways and all we are having a lane concept so what they will do is they will put the uh, lane on uh, so they will they can sleep so the machine will take a control the car will take a control so automatically it will follow the lane and also it wants to overtake it will sense the surrounding environment and based on that it will put the indicator and it will move from one lane to another lane and level five the car itself drive autonomously the driver to be a like a passenger so all the responsibility will be taken by the car itself so this advanced driver assistance system it is working based on radars cameras ultrasound mechanism and also with lidar lidar represents the light detection ranging camera so these radars are mainly used for object detection the surrounding environment it will senses and based on that it will provide the assistance to the driver so in level zero it will provide the assistance in parking and also night vision and in level one, it will provide with the brake assistant and also speed control. And in level two, highway assistant. And in level three, highway chaffer. That's why I told uh, it will uh, sense the environment and do overtaking also it will do it. That is changing from one lane to another lane. And level four, it is using the automatic valet parking. And in level five, the vehicle is fully autonomous. And this provides a smart vehicle communication. So B2X represents vehicle to everything. So here the data will be uh, captured. Uh, in each vehicle, we have various sensor system. So that information will be transferred to the central infrastructure. And based on that, uh, the components of the vehicle will be controlled. So that is called as vehicle to everything. So it will improve the road safety energy saving and the traffic efficiency of your road. So it will make your smart road, smart city, smart parking. So everything will be coming here. And these are the technologies under CPS. So CPS is not a single thing. So it has come with different technology, nanotechnology, which will make uh, the systems even though very smaller and also increases the power. IoT, so it is a subset of CPS, but IoT definitely need the internet, but CPS to communicate with the computational system um, even without internet. So machine learning, it is a subset of artificial intelligence, then virtual reality, communication technologies, 4G, 5G, 7G, then blockchain technology, computer vision, natural language processing, smart sensor. So all the technologies are work together to create a different application in various fields. So this is a global view how the CPS is there. So we have a cyber physical system, so IoT is the subset of that. So using the IoTs and sensors, the data will be collected from the system and also from the environment. And in the embedded computing, the embedded computing will do the uh, computations 
and to do the computation we need some artificial intelligence algorithms so that you use with the deep learning for decision making the data whatever you capture is a large data because it is coming from different domains so it is a big data and it will do the control and communication so this iot makes instead of sensing the data and sending the data to the cyber space nowadays we have this edge computing concept so on the chip itself the computation will be done and i will just give an overview of ai so ai ml and dl so ai makes the machine to be intelligent so machine learning it is a subset of ai which will make the machine to learn without being explicitly programmed and deep learning it is mainly based on our brain network the learning is based on the deep neural network and it will connect with the data science because it have large amount of data to be collected so the big data uh, which is collected from iot devices or sensors so that will all with come with the data science and big data so every technology is combined together and artificial intelligence so we are incorporating the human intelligence to the machine so the machine will mimic like a human and the machine can do a problem solving reasoning and generalized learning and machine learning so machine learning makes your computer to learn automatically without being explicitly programmed so by giving a data to your machine the model itself learn interpret process analyze using the machine learning algorithm and it will try to solve the real world problems and there are different types of machine learning algorithms you are having supervised unsupervised and reinforced supervised learnings are mainly used for classification because these are the labeled data unsupervised learning mainly used for the class, uh, clustering purpose these are the unlabeled data and reinforcement learning is learned from the mistakes that is the feedback based and deep learning which is mainly mimic the human brain it is work based on the artificial neural network and with the representation learning you know what is the difference between machine learning and the deep learning in terms of data dependency machine learning needs less amount of data but deep learning needs large amount of data then only the performance will be high and machine learning can be done in the small end machines but deep learning we need some gpus and machine learning uh, there is a separate part called as feature extraction but deep learning the feature engineering from the end to end the feature got extracted and do the job and problem solving approach again it's an end to end approach but machine learning we have the feature extraction separately and then model separately execution time as compared with machine learning deep learning will take more time because so many parameters need to be optimized and interpretability it is not easy to interpret how our deep learning is working because it's like our brain structure we cannot understand how our brain is working and ai in cps so the ai uh, when you implement the cps we have physical layer application layer network layer so your physical layer contain all your sensors and actuators the application layer having the software the software part only the computation will be done and there only our ai will integrated inside the cps and ai edge computing in previous diagram and all the data will be collected from the physical process and it will go to the cyber space and there only the computation will be done but nowadays we have the edge computing the data whatever we collected from the sensors it will be converted to analog to digital and automatically in our processor chip itself the computation will be done using the ai machine learning algorithms and that will be given as a feedback to the actuators to control your device so to support the ai edge processing we have several ai chips integrated with the edge processing which is developed with some famous companies uh, google microsoft aws ibm they are providing various edge computing chips in order to support this uh, cps environment and as we talk with industrial 4.0 itself uh, there is a leak to the industrial 5.0 so industrial 5.0 mainly deals with the autonomous manufacturing with human intelligence so we have a overlapping of machine along with the human intelligence so that will provide a personalization so uh, the, it should have a interdependence of man and machine mainly based on the cognitive computing okay so that will provide the mass customization 
and also can provide the accurate decision and maximize the success with the knowledge of the human along with the uh, computer or the uh, physical system. So it will learn from the uh, computer uh, and it will try to mimic like a human. So the human knowledge will be incorporated entirely to the machine. So it will work like a human. So that we expect for the industry 5.0. And this diagram will tell you how uh, the industry revolutions have differences, differences. So initially we have only human and the machines. So that time the analysis, decision making, everything to be done by the human. So when the cyber physical system comes, so the burden of the human got reduced because the analysis and the decision making and the sensing will be done by the cyber system. And when the IoT introduced, the data will be transferred through the IoT. The data will be maintained as a big data and uh, the computations, uh, the decision making, so or the communication between two systems all will be done through the IoT and the cloud platform. And now I am talking with the compute, uh, cognitive computing. So along with decision making, sensing, we have everything the machine has to done in an intelligent manner and also it has to learn cognitively. So this only related with our cognitive computing for the industrial 5.0. And this intelligent manufacturing system will provide the combination of human, cyber system, physical system. It uses three main characteristics. Intelligence, because it needs to do an autonomous learning and it has to do the autonomous adjustment. And grand system, it have a integration. Integration represents in terms of functionality and in terms of supporting system. Functionality means all things will be intelligent. Intelligent sensing, intelligent production, everything needs to be intelligent. The supporting technology may be an IoT or a cloud computing. And ubiquitous integration, so it is a vertical integration in terms of from the design until to the manufacturing process, everything to be an intelligent way. And in order to do that, we need IoT cloud, which will provide the sharing environment, collaboration environment. So all will be handled with the IoT and cloud. And cognitive computing. So cognitive computing is nothing but you will simulate the human process in the machine. So it is a combination of cognitive science and the computer science. So by using this cognitive computing, you can understand the language. The machine can understand the language, recognize the object, text face, scenes, voices, uh, so it can easily interact with human and also with the another machines. And also the cognitive computing can able to access structured data and also unstructured data. And this also used in a different variety of applications. And uh, generally when you uh, go with uh, Siri and Alexa, they are pre-programmed. So if you give a question, they will respond. And when you go with chatbot, so that will have a thoughtful response. So based on the feedbacks and based on the previous conversation, it will give an adaptive thing. And now we are having something that will give a real time response. So for example, so uh, the doctor has to take some uh, decisions. So uh, when uh, based on the previous histories and journals, articles and the previous experience, the machine will uh, analyze large amount of data because the humans will not have uh, that much process to handle huge amount of data analysis. So the uh, machine has to give a better decision by analyzing the huge amount of data. It's not replacing the doctor, but it is giving a support to the doctor in the um, decision making. So the human have some standard capabilities, machine have some standard capabilities. So now all put together, we will lead to the industry 5.0. So here the man is not versed with machine. The man and machine work together. The machine will be considered as a collaborator, not the competitor. And this is the future that is a cobot advances in sensing technology and machine cognizant. So you can take the image processing inputs or it can use with audio analysis, sensory data. So different types of data, structured and unstructured data will be processed. And based on that, the machine will uh, collaborate with the human and the decision making. So here the machine will do the self-learning and the cognizant. It will cooperate with the human and with the other machines. 
and it will do the decision makings and it using various technologies that is localization, vision, cognizant with embedded platforms. And in order to support the machine intelligence, we need some intelligent sensing and we need some autonomous cognizant and we need some intelligent decision making, intelligent control. So these all are the key features which will make your machine to be act as an intelligent machine. And last, uh, there are some application areas. So when our cognitive computing is integrated with various areas, so we have the retail industry uh, because you know that uh, nowadays we are using the Amazons. So based on the customer's input, authenticated inputs you do in the earlier searching and based on your records and previous inputs, so the system itself provide you a customized product. So by using this technology, it will avoid the wastage, predicting the demand priorly itself. So it also improve the efficiency. And when you go with logistic, the entire from the transportation, logistics, supply chain, everything will be covered with the intelligence. And here we have some technologies like uh, uh, hand-free barcode scanning, then wearable headset, uh, and also we have some voice technology uh, in order to communicate. The human can communicate with the machines available in the data warehouse environment using some sensors, IoT networking, wearable technology, and the voice technology. Because this, uh, you can see here, uh, we have some automated vehicle that can carry the products from one place to another place optimizing the inventory everything we can do with the uh, logistic and banking and finance so based on the personal experience and the data uh, the bank and financial industry providing you some loans providing you some offers so that is providing the personalized engagement to the customers and power and energy so in the industry so uh, by analyzing the cost and by analyzing the demand, so it will produce the distribution. So along with the uh, professionals, it will do the decision making and it will explore which site to explore, what is the allocation of resource, how much quantity to be produced, how much to be distributed, so all can be supported. And in cybersecurity, we have a volume of data, so that may be a possibility of cyber attacks. So by using this cognitive knowledge in the cyber security environment it will provide the technical solution how to detect and also how to prevent the uh, security issues and healthcare as i told already so the human cannot able to process huge amount of data so when we use with the cognizable technique using the machine learning algorithm and data mining algorithm the machine can uh, analyze various data even though from the real-time information medical transcript and with the previous records all the things so it can able to provide some uh, decision making and for the uh, customized treatment planning uh, so the cognitive computing is mainly used in the genome medicines how the genome can be analyzed so by, by analyzing the genome of the previous history so they are trying to develop the uh, genome medicines and not only all this, education itself, the cognitive plays an important role. So it provides the personalized study material to the student. It is acting as a career counselor. And for the faculty also, it is using uh, how to prepare a report and feedback systems in an efficient manner. So this is up to this. I can stop here. So I have given some overview of uh, like a theory thing so i didn't go with a research part but there is several researchers are going in this area with the industrial cps system in terms of artificial intelligence in terms of networking in terms of security uh, and in terms of with different areas thank you thank you ma'am uh, it was an interesting session on industrial cyber physical systems uh, participants, the session is open for you.
Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for the time, ma'am. And thank it was you, an interesting session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Participants, kindly wait for the feedback link to be posted in the chats. Sir, I can leave. Uh, ma'am, uh, ma'am, one question. Sir, ma uh, yes, ma'am. Durgesh Sharma. Sir, can sir, yes, sir, you can proceed, sir. You can proceed with the question, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. Uh, tell me, sir. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. This dot father, please check, ma'am. People say it is for five believe like that. What you said it's for five point zero. Sir, actually, I'm not uh, clear with your thing. Can you give it in the chat box? Your voices. Yes, sir. Yes, hold on. Yeah, I'll do. So I'm not having more idea about in the research uh, level. So I have given just an overview of. Uh, industrial CPS. Uh, yes, sir, as I told, I have uh, worked with AI. Uh, that's why I have introduced some flavor of AI with CPS domain. As I told, that will be a separate thing with either with IoT with CPS, blockchain with CPS, cybersecurity with CPS, cloud with CPS. There are various areas that are there, sir. And thank you, ma'am. It is a very useful session. And dear participants, here I post the uh, feedback and announcement for the day one session two. Uh, sir, kindly I can, find the. I can leave. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. The feedback link is posted in the chat box. You can uh, use for the day one, session two. And again, we will meet the session by, uh, I think, 2.30. So we have the uh, third session between 2.30 to 4.30. It is uh, title is about AI, ML, and data science for the cyber physical systems. And the resource person is Dr. Prashant Arnayar, uh, Associate Professor, uh, Amrita University. So. End of the session, so end of your uh, uh, last day, that is your uh, uh, Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, we will post the test link, so everyone should attend the test, and minimum minimum uh, mark required to get the certificate 60 percentage, and attendance is 80 percent, it is as per the AACD guidelines only, so try to uh, follow this, so in, in meanwhile, if you have any difficulty to attend the classes, or you are not able to connect it, so please inform us, we are, uh, have, we are always happy to help you. So, uh, hope the uh, link is there. Anyhow, again, I'll post it. So, try to fill the attendance and feedback now together. Thank you, everyone.